Thank you for joining us today. Those of you online, whether it's KITV, Facebook, YouTube, we bless you in the name of the Lord. We welcome you and greet you and thank God for your fellowship with us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. This is a good day. Amen. Wonderful to be together in the presence of God. Well, we're going to worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings today. Praise God. Do I hear an amen, somebody? Amen. Do I hear a shout? We're excited. You know, the Bible says in uh, Genesis chapter 28, kind of sound hearing an echo, Genesis chapter 28, verse 20, you know, uh, Jacob was about to go on a journey. He was going to relocate, if you will, away from his family that he was used to being around. And he was communicating, you see some words here, that expresses his faith and trust in God. Amen. And you know if anyone's going to make it, we need God. We need Amen. his help. We need him to be the foundation of our lives. And he says this, so this is amazing, about to go on a journey, is going to develop new relationships, going to get a new job, new environment. And you know, he's away, he's away from his family that he was connected oh. to and that helped him a lot. And you know, he's going to really have a family of his own. And so look at what he says. In verse 20, in Genesis 28, verse 20, Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go. So we see here what was important to Jacob was, God, I, I need you to be with me. As long as I know that you're with me, it'll all turn out. Amen. That's beautiful. And that's, a, you know, right now at the beginning, God wants to encourage somebody. As long as you know God is with you, Hallelujah. you'll make it. Praise God, you'll get through whatever you're getting through to the other side in a good way. It says, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. So you notice he's depending God to be his source for everything. So that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Isn't that powerful? Amen. He was even looking into the future, saying, God, I'm going on a journey here. I'm expecting you to lead me. I'm expecting you to provide for me. I'm expecting you to help me. I'm also seeing to the future that I'm going to come back to my family in the future. Yes. You're going to bring me back. You see that? So it's all of this. So that I come to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I've set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you will give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Amen. The tenth is the tenth part. The tenth is one over ten as a fraction. It is 10% as a percentage. It is called the tithe in throughout the Bible. Amen. So he said, God, if you'll bless me, everything, that I, everything you bless me with, I'm going to honor you and recognize you as the source of my life by giving you the tithe. Amen. Amen. By giving you the 10%. And we know that's a principle before the law, before the law that was given to Moses. Isn't that wonderful? Before Malachi chapter 3, right in Genesis. You know, where did Jacob learn? Where did he learn that from? Well, he must have learned it from his father Isaac or his grandfather Jacob. Had to learn it from somewhere. And so he put that into practice in his life. So today, we're going to do that tonight, today. Amen. We're going to honor the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. God that of all, you look back and say, Lord, as you bless me this week or this month, I want to honor you with the tithe. I want to honor you. And you realize your tithe is helping us to preach the gospel. Amen. You bring the tithe in the New Testament, bring it into the local church, into the place where God is feeding you and helping you to take your part in the body of Christ and grow in the things of God. And if everybody does their part, if everybody who's a part of Foundation for Life, if everybody does their part, and honors God with the tithe, and obeys, give offerings as the Lord impresses upon you, then all the needs will be met. Amen. 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 If everybody <coughs> does their part. Somebody say everybody. everybody. Say it again, everybody. everybody. Point to yourself, that includes me. That's Point to somebody else, say that includes you. That's everybody. So everybody today, let's re return. So Balakai talks about returning. So bringing to, look at what the man says here. God, I'm going to honor you. I'll Amen. give you the tenth. Think about that. Going on a journey, not knowing what would lie him, but he knew God would be with him. Amen. God would bless his life. Amen. Glory to God. So if you're ready to give, you want to give, whether it's a, a check, a cash money order, raise your hands and we'll get an offering envelope to you. 
If you're giving by e-transfer, e-transfer, just go to info at foundationforlife.ca or so send it to info at foundationforlife.ca. Please designate if it's your tithes, your offerings, if it's a special offering to go to the media ministry or otherwise designate that. If it's, um, if you also can go to our website, www.foundationforlife.ca, hit the Give Online tab. You can also give by Canada Helps or PayPal. So different ways, lots of different avenues where we can honor the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Thank God for modern technology. Amen. Praise Amen. God the way where you can honor the Lord and be obedient to him. Amen. Say everybody again. Everybody. everybody. Let's honor God. Let everybody give today. Everybody, if it's your tithes, obey God by returning it to the Lord. If it's an offering, obey God in giving. And like I said, everybody doing their part. And I'm emphasizing that every person in Foundation for Life, you've got a part. Amen? Your part might be $10 a week. Your part might be $100. Whatever your part is, just do your part. Amen? In fact, say this to somebody. Turn to them and say real smiles with a smile. Just do your part. Turn to somebody else. Tell them, just do your part. That's it. That's all God is saying. Just do your part. This man, he did his part, and God blessed his life. Let's lift our offerings up to the Lord or, or your phone or however you're giving. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your blessing upon our lives. We're so glad that you're with us. We know it because your word says, you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. So we already know. We don't have to ask you to be with us. You already committed and pledged and promised to be with us. You're right with us. And we thank you that you're ordering our steps. Thank you that you're with us to bless us and to do us good. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping your people. Fathers, we obey your word by bringing our tithes and offerings. It's because we realize you're a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you for helping us. That family that is trusting you and believing you to take them out of that challenging situation. Thank you, Father, for being their source, their Hallelujah. provider, their helper today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your blessing upon our lives. Thank you for opening doors of opportunity, even new doors. Father, thank you for blessing. Thank you for favor. Thank you for multiplication. Thank you for restoration upon the people of Foundation for Life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said? Amen. Amen, amen. Let's say this together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I believe your word. I believe your word. You are my shepherd. You are my shepherd. I do not lack. I do not, I do not want. I do not. And I believe, and I believe that you are supplying all of my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You are my source and I'm trusting you today. Amen. You know, it's wonderful what Jacob's, uh, that story showed us. He was establishing God, there's only one source for my life and that's you. And sometimes we've got to go back again and say, Lord, we've got to find, review, check Speak to ourselves and say, who are we really trusting? Amen. And God's got to be our source. Amen. Amen. God is my source. How about you? Hallelujah. 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 Praise Amen. God. Praise God. It is good to be together Amen. as in the fam with the family of God. I tell you, it's such a wonderful pleasure to come together like this every week, keeping that a, a practice, a pattern in our lives, Amen. always coming together fellowshipping with the Lord and growing as the family of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's turn with me to our first Peter chapter three, verse seven. As we do so, I'm going to pray as God will help us to receive the word of God today. Father, thank you for the opportunity to come together like this. Lord, you did say that it's that every time we come together, you're with us. And we're so grateful. Thank you for the families of Foundation for Life who've chosen to honor you by coming together on, on these Sunday mornings, coming together every week, honoring you by setting aside that time to receive your word, to fellowship with the saints, to pray one for another, to take communion and fellowship. Thank you for this. Thank you for blessing your people today. 
And Father, I, I thank you for helping me to minister the word of God. Thank you for unction and utterance and boldness to declare the word of the Lord. Thank you Holy, for the help of the Holy Spirit today. Hallelujah. And Father, help us, every one of us, to not just be hearers of the word, but help us to be doers. Help us to do the word of God. Help us to really put it into practice in the name of Jesus. Thank you for helping us to renew our minds, to change thought patterns, to change even wrong behavior and activities. Praise God, we depend upon your great grace in all of our lives today to take us up higher in your grace, in your power, in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, that would be our jumping off scripture. You know, we've been in a series entitled Keys to a Peaceful Marriage and Home, right? Peaceful. Someone say peaceful. peaceful. And I've been saying that a lot lately. Someone say it again. Peaceful. Peaceful. And I can't help but saying every time I think about that, you want a peaceful family, right? You want a peaceful home. I don't know nobody who wants to go home to a place that is not peaceful. I don't know. Why. You know, you'd have to be a little bit crazy to want that. You want peace in your home. Amen. You know, nothing broken, nothing bro missing, complete tranquility. That's your home, a peaceful. And what's beautiful about that is that when you go out, I and mean, you know, sometimes things can be quite as stressful and challenging outside. When you, whether it's work, ministry, whatever you're doing outside, there can be challenging situations. There can be new relationships you engage or people who treat you badly. And, but you, when you get home, you want peace. What do you want? Amen. Peace. And, and there's a part we all have to play in, uh, we could say, establishing peace in our lives, in our homes, in our families. But also a big part of this series, we're also understanding what marriage is which is helpful to those of us who are married, but it's also helpful to those of you young people or older people who desire to be married. You'll know how to do it right. Are you listening to me? And so um, let me say by, by introduction, so marriage is not simply a physical relationship. You know, it's not just physically, really it's a spiritual relationship. It's also a partnership. Someone say partnership. partnership. It's a partnership. And um, it's, it's a powerful agreement that God establishes, if we do it right, where we can really receive of his grace and power in our lives. And so look at the First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. I want you to look at this scripture to begin with. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, I'm going to do the King James. We'll probably stay with the Amplifier for the rest of the day after this. But 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, it says this, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. This is the phrase I want you to look at. As being heirs together. You should underline that. Heirs together. Someone say together. together. Not apart, right? Together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. You know, I've met couples and oftentimes they, they have the title of husband and wife, but they're not really together. So that's something very important. We got them, so we're, we're heirs together. But what I want you to underline there says of the grace of life. So in marriage, when you do it right and you come together, then you have the ability to draw on the grace of God. So there's a grace. Grace is the provision of God. It's the, uh, the ability of God. It's the goodness of God. It's, the, it's all the provision. Really, it's your inheritance. A married couple can draw upon that so they're not, just, they're not limited to just natural abilities. Right. Hey, listen to me. So God wants a couple to draw on the grace of life. Mm -hmm. Powerful. So that means regardless of what their natural abilities or even potential is, boy, we could say they're unlimited if they'll tap into the grace of God. God wants to be the source of our lives. Amen. So God wants to be the source of our marriage, wants to be the source of our families, right? Wants to be the source of our potential. Look at, so you, and so that your prayers be not hindered. That's why we know it's a spiritual relationship also. Amen. You see that? So, so, um, you come together, one of the things God wants couples and families to engage 
in their relationship is prayer. So we're talking of really what we're talking about, we're talking about the Christian family. So the Christian family is connected to God. The Christian couple comes together very um, cognizant, very aware of their relationship with God, and they're dependent on God. And says their prayers would not be hindered. Now, why would you be praying if you don't need some things, if God wasn't your source? So the Christian couple, we could say the Christian family, is dependent on God. Are you listening to me? So that your prayers be not hindered. So God, so your prayers is an avenue by which you receive the grace of God in your life. So it's important that we understand marriage very well because it could mean that we could say we don't want we don't want hell. Or oh, put it another way, it could be heaven on earth, or it could be hell on earth. Which one do you want? You want heaven on earth, right? It could be one where you're receiving the grace of God continually in your lives or one where you don't, you're not receiving the grace of God. And so by you hearing the word of God, you'll better be able to cooperate with how to receive God's grace for your life, for your marriage, for your children, for your home. Amen. And so last week we looked at the husband's superpowers. You can flex your biceps, your We've got some superpowers. And we said this, and we'll turn to this scripture here, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, Ephesians 5, 20. Now, we've got to understand this a whole lot better. I'm telling you, we've got to look at this this area of marriage and family so we can do it right. Are you listening to me? Just because people live in a building together doesn't mean they're functioning as a family. Are you listening to me? You know, just because people have the same name doesn't mean they're truly functioning as a family. Are you listening to me? Uh, And so, um, I mean, just because people go under the name of Christian doesn't mean they're truly living as God ordained for them to live. And so that's why we're pointing you to God's word so we can align ourselves with God's will. And experience his best. So Ephesians 5 verse 25 says this, King James. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Now, if you missed that message from last week, check it out. Go to our YouTube channel. You need to hear that message and any of the messages we've taught previously in this series. Some things go together. And so if you didn't hear what we shared before, you know, you'll be missing as to why we're saying what we're saying today. And as I get into this, we're going to look into the, um, uh, let me just say this, go to Romans chapter 5, we're going to, just before we get to the, um, the woman's superpower, just by way of maybe of reviewing something. So Ephesians, Romans chapter 5, let's look at that, please, we need to look at that. So we said the, the Christian husband, I said the Christian husband, right? He possesses the God kind of love inside of him. And look at this scripture, Romans chapter 5, verse 5, says, Hope makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. So now, where is that love? It's in us, but it's in our hearts. It's in our spirits. Does it say it's in our head? No. It's where? In our, in our hearts. Is it in our feelings, in our emotions? No. It's in our hearts. It's in our spirits. And remember, it's important to remember, man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a physical body. So he's tripartite. And so that love is in your spirit. Right? And, and so the Christian husband is called to live from that love of God that is in his heart. That's really, 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 really important. Amen? So we're called to love our wives from that kind of love, the God kind of love. And that's interesting because Paul said in Ephesians 5, 25, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Isn't that powerful? So that's a greater love than which even your natural mom loved you. Isn't that powerful? Think about that. So think about that kind of love. That's how, or we should say, that's the source from which we draw on to love our wives. Which tells you, think about this, that means there's almost nothing your wife can do 
that you can't overlook or get past. Think about it. Because of the love of God that's in you. Think about that, people. Praise God. Amen. And so um, I might have said this last week. So the Christian husband, someone say the Christian husband. So is called to lead his family with and by and through the love of God. Everyone got that? And so God tells the Christian husband, listen, I want the, the God kind of love, my love in you, to lead your marriage and family. I want you to think about that. Those are some thoughts maybe you've not had before. Let me say it again. So God is saying to the Christian man, I said what, the Christian husband, the Christian husband, I want you to lead your family with, by, and through the God kind of love that's on the inside of you. Just think about that. Not a natural human love. Not by your feelings. Not by what she looks like. Not by what she's doing. But I want you to look at that love on the inside of you. I want you to love her with that kind of love. Isn't that powerful? Amen. So what kind of love is this? It's the God kind of love. Someone say God kind of love. God kind of and we looked at that over the last few weeks because <laughs> it's, a sac- it's a self-sacrificial love. It is an unselfish love. It is not self-centered. So hear that again. It is self-sacrificial. It's unselfish. It's not self-centered. That's the kind of love that's in us. Are you listening to me? I've been thinking about that. I said, boy, I've not looked at that. I need to look. And maybe I need, I need to look at that even stronger. Now I want you to look at an amazing scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Because we've got to look at this God kind of love. I don't think we've looked at it yet in this series. But... It's a good time to look at it. First Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to read from the Amplified just because it says it better. And it's more accurate com- compared to the original. So First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. We're talking about, Paul said, Christian husband, because that's who he's writing to. Christian men and women, Christian people, Christian families. It says, husbands, I want you to love your wives as Christ loved the church. Isn't that what he said? Love your wives as Christ loved the church. And we've identified that this love, he's saying that love of God is in you. Because he's talking to Christians, right? Now, let me say now, he's not talking to, um, let's say, in North America, is oftentimes known as Christian countries. But that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about a, the, a Christ, people who claim to be under the Christian religion. We're talking about people who are truly born again and have received their nature changed by God. Now this love is on the inside of us and now we're living by that love. And look at what this love it says. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Look in what this love looks like. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us. I like that does not insist on its own rights or its own way. Everyone see that? We're talking about this is the God kind of love that is in the Christian husband. This God kind of love doesn't insist, underline this, doesn't insist on his own rights or his own way. Watch this. It is not self-seeking. See that? Mm -hmm. It's not self-seeking. It is not touchy, fretful, or resentful. I love this. It's not self-seeking. It takes no account of evil done to it, pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Can you see then this God kind of love that's in the Christian husband? It's unselfish. It's self-sacrificial. It's not committed. It's not living for himself as far as his home, his marriage, his family. Everyone see that? So now this God kind of love, really it's inside every believer. And it's a matter, are we choosing to obey that love on the inside of us, or are we going by our feelings, our flesh, walking by sight? And God's plan is for us to grow in this love. And you know, you can can have something, but you don't use it. So this love on the inside of us, and so we're we're talking right now about has Christians in every believer, male and female, but this love is on in the Christian man. And Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, saying, Christian husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Why would he tell us to do something we couldn't do? He was doing it based on, listen, you're believers. 
You've been transformed. You're a new creation. That love is on the inside of you now. You see that? That, self, that selfish, self-centered, I mean mean-spirited, that spirit left you. Now, this new spirit, the love of God is on the inside of you. Now you're going to have to renew your mind because you, and you're going to crucify your flesh. But you know, you've got the love of God on the inside of you. We've got to grow in this. Amen? And he's saying, so this love is what must motivate our marriage and our relationship with our wives. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So now that's really, really important. So because where we're going, it's important that we, that's why I'm repeating myself several times. So the Christian husband is motivated by the love of God. And, but remember, it's not static. It's something we've got to grow in. We've got to let you know that you've got it. So you can now, if you've not done it before, if you've met, been married and you've been divorced, or you never knew the Lord or whatever, and you're looking to get into a new relationship, you can do it with God. Isn't that wonderful? When you understand this, you'll know why God wants people in the world to know him because if they have the love of God, boy, that love of God can change their lives. It can change their marriage. You could be someone right now, you're going through a cha challenging time in your marriage. You could say, man, my marriage is terrible, but I'm telling you, if you'll receive the love of God, if you'll allow Jesus to come into your heart and change, your, change you on the inside, that love will cha transform your life. Amen. Amen. It will transform your home. It will transform your marriage. Amen. Amen. Boy, I tell you, that's good news. No wonder the Bible says the gospel is what? Good news. It's good news. So again, the husband's headship is, is uh, characterized by being self-sacrificial, unselfish, not self-centered. Powerful. It focused on the love, not seeking their own purpose, not driven by their own self-motivation. They're motivated to do whatever they can to be the very best. For their wife. Amplified talks about pampering. Amen. Somebody I heard, the service didn't even finish. And they went to their husband and said, I need to be pampered. <laughs> didn't even leave the door. You, you understand that? I told you women were demanding. Didn't I say that last Amen. week? Demanding. All right, turn to this scripture. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 and 24. We're going to get into this. Super, we will get to the super, woman superpower. Now, when we look at this scripture in Ephesians, um, we'll read it, but I don't want you to initially get into what this scripture, well, let me say, let me say it another way. Let's just read it. Wives, be subject, be submissive. This is the Amplified. And adapt yourselves to your own husbands. As a, as a service to the Lord. Listen to the language here. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife. Oh, that's verse 33. Let's stop right there. So this is pretty strong stuff here that it's speaking to wives. So we're talking about Christian wives, right? What are we talking to? Who is he talking to? Christian, Christian wives. wives. Now, let me just say this, because we've got to say some things here, because, you know, when you speak like this, you, you can feel some of the breaks go on. Yeah. And, uh, and I understand it, but you've got to, you have to understand the scriptures correctly. So now, the scripture doesn't say wives are doormats. Does it say that? No. no. Does it say they're in, oh, it doesn't, we're talking about the Christian wife. Does it say um, what women or wives are inferior? No, no it's, it doesn't say that, okay? Um, does it say they're to be subject to every whim of their husbands? No, no it, it doesn't say that. Please, we've got to, I, need some, I need some feedback here. No, it doesn't say that. Now, you've got to understand when it talks, because I want to get to what the real superpower is. So it talks about wives submit to your husbands. And so now, if you're not careful, you'll miss the real heart of this. And that's what I want to get to today. So now, these actions, when it says husbands, because the scripture does say in the Christian home, the husband is the head, the lead of that family. Scripture says that. Amen. Now, the church especially now, is having real problems with that. Started for probably decades. 
but more so now. But a lot of that has become, become, become of the perversion of Christian men's understanding of that scripture and how they've executed it. And also because they've not been um, led by the love of God, but by being self-centered. So it's messed it up a whole lot. So women say, well, if that's marriage, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. And I would be, I'd have to agree with them. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you listening to what I'm saying? So we've got to, that's why we're, going to be, we're taking our time. You've got to understand this correctly and accurately. Now, let me ask you a question. Why, why, I've asked all these questions myself. In our day and age, there are women who make more than their husband. Okay. Is, that, is that true? Amen. All right. In our day, there are some women who are smarter, I'm saying intellectually, than their husbands. Amen. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Okay, in our day, there are some women who are in a more higher profile position than their husbands. Yeah. Is anyone here? Amen. All right. Let me ask you a question. Do you think God knows that? Amen. <laughs> Anybody, do you think God knows that? Yes. All right. So then you better understand, but yet he still says, in in light of all that I just said, in the Christian home, husbands, I want you to be, you're the head of the family. And he still says in the Christian home, wives submit to your husbands. Isn't it? So is that a contradiction? Not in God's eyes, we better, but we better understand it correctly. We have to understand this right because, boy, if we do, boy, I'm telling you, it's going to help us a whole lot. It's going to be very, very, very powerful. And so the Christian husband must um, trust God and exercise faith in the love of God that's inside him. Do you know, similarly, the Christian wife is called to trust God to be the wife God's called her to be. So you've got to understand these things, we could say these motivations, they're not natural things. They're spiritual forces on the inside of us. God wants us to be much more aware of. Amen? Amen. So again, let me say it. So in, in Christ, Christian wives, they have the ability to adapt themselves, I'm using the Amplified, to their husbands and his leadership of the family and home. I'm going to read my, read my notes again. Listen, she might be more intelligent, and gifted than her husband. She had, oh, listen, don't you think God knows your wife has ideas, has opinions, Amen. and some of her ideas are better than yours? <laughs> Did you think he, uh, are you listening to me? Amen. Now, and so the smart husband, what will he do? He will take advantage Amen. of those ideas. Yes. He will listen Amen. and receive the counsel, the advice, of his wife. Amen. Is anyone hear what I'm saying Amen. here? Amen. Let, me, let me say, listen, there are some wives, there are CEOs of companies. Yeah. You got to, so we've got to say all of these things, this scripture is still relevant, but you've got to understand it, even in light of all these things. Is anyone hear what I'm saying? Amen. So now watch this. In the, in the home, the Christian wife is not seeking, getting ahead of myself, or striving for position or power. She's not demanding that everything revolve around her. Now, I still haven't gotten to the superpower yet, but I'm going to get to it. First Peter chapter 3. Read First Peter chapter 3. Again, we took a while because oftentimes Christian men have thought, this is them. Well, don't you know the Bible says, I'm the head of the home? And their interpretation of that is this. Wife, you've got to listen to me and do everything I tell you. Mm-hmm. You understand that? And some people have taken it so far to say that means it's legitimized abuse. Mm-hmm. You see, so the perversion of that, has been, and some of it many times under the name of Christianity. I'm the head and you better do what I tell you. And if not, that's it. Is anyone hear what I'm saying? And so she doesn't have a voice, even though she's smart and some may be smarter than him. But this, when we look at the scripture, that's why we took a long time. The man is called to love his wife. His motivation is love. His motivation is affirmation. His motivation to help her to be everything she's called to be. 
Amen. Are listening to me? And so now, let me, uh, there's an example. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. There was a gentleman, his wife was a doctor. He worked in sanitation. I think about this. Very good at what she does. But the interesting thing, I was told, when she came home, they had a beautiful marriage as her husband. It didn't stop her own individuality, her profession, her career. And if you know, so that's a man who was smart. That's a man who was secure. But that was also a woman who understood what God's plan was for the marriage. Amen. Everyone see that? Look at this scripture. In, I'm reading from the Amplified, 1 Peter chapter 3. In like manner, you married women, married women, not, is he talk, he's talking to Christian married women, be submissive to your own husbands, subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them. Now listen to the language here. And adapt yourselves to them. Now, notice it doesn't say that they're subordinate. Listen, why would God tell you to submit to someone if you were not equal? So submission must always be voluntary, but I don't want you to get caught up on that yet because you got, I'm going to get to the heart of this. What allows a Christian woman to do what God's word says? Because remember, anytime we're forced to do something externally, it's not from the heart. Amen. That's what made slavery uh, such the atrocity that it was. It was men using their will to punish other people, to bend people to their will. God doesn't even do that. So he says now, he says, wives, I want you to do, do this. Submit to your, yourselves. Submit. Now you make the decision. Submit to your husbands. This is God talking, right? Through the Apostle Paul. And listen to what he says now. Adapt yourself to your husbands. This is the Amplified. So that even if any do not obey the word of God. Now listen to this. They may be won over by the, dis not by discussion, not by their words, but by the godly lives of their wives. Now this is absolutely outstanding. You, you got women, if you're married, you need to read this scripture. It's outstanding. When they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourselves, together with your reverence for your husband, you are to feel for him all that reverence includes, to respect, defer to, revere him, to honor him, esteem, appreciate, prize, and in the human sense, to adore him. Now, let me stop right here. A Christian woman is not going to naturally want to do that. Do you hear what I just said? No more than it's easy, naturally, for a Christian man to love his wife as Christ loves the church. Something has to happen in our hearts where we're, pay where, where we're paying attention to this love on the inside. And we're, pay, we're, we're yielding to that love. Are you listening to me? Yes. We're yielding to that. So look at the language the Apostle Paul uses here. So now it says, to respect, defer, to revere him, honor, esteem, appreciate, prize, in the human sense, adore him. That is to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love, and enjoy your husband. Watch this. Let not yours be merely the external adorning with elaborate interweaving and knotting of the air, the wearing of jewelry or changes of clothes. Now, it doesn't say those things don't do those things, but it says that isn't to be the end all. For some women, the, all, the, their focus, everything about them is the external. Now, that's, you know, it's good to look good. Women, you better look good on the outside. But really, it's supposed to be a reflection of what's inside. But now it tells you what the focus is. This is where we get into. This is the superpower we get into now. But let it, let your focus be, 
the inward adorning and beauty, listen to this, of the hidden person of the heart with the uncorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle, King James says meek, which is a good word, and peaceful spirit. Look at this. Watch this. Which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. Look at this. It's precious in the sight of God. So now, we could ask then, what is God looking for? What is attractive to God in the Christian wife? Underline it, ladies. It is a, a gentle, a meek, and quiet spirit. You've got to underline that. I look at what is this woman's superpower? You got to say, inside, oh, listen, don't, don't interpret quiet in that she's quiet, because sometimes if a woman has an opinion, if she's vocal, people say, oh, she's just out of order. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about inside, listen, inside her spirit. She's a humble person, because it uses the word meek. If someone is humble, they're dependent on God. It says, a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So this woman is a woman, write it down, that trusts God. Mm -hmm. See? She trusts God for everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why everything about her isn't what she looks like in the mirror. Yes, she looks beautiful on the outside, but more important to her than that is this, her trust in God. Amen. What she's like on the inside. How God sees her on the inside. That's what she's majored on. Is anyone hearing this? This is really important. Listen, of a gentle and peaceful spirit. A meek and quiet spirit. Let me focus a little bit on this word meek. Now, if you're meek, it means then you're humble. It means you're willing and able to be led. It means you're saying, God, I want to I want to be I want to be I want to be led by you. I'm trusting you. I'm depending on you. Is anybody hearing this? Read it. Look at it. Underline it. I'm telling you because it says which is in the sight of God of it's great. It's very precious. So the Christian woman should really be asking first, God, what are you looking for? How can I please you? And what he's looking for is a heart that says, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm depending on you. And a good way to think of it, maybe visually, just like how you, you take great pride in looking good on the outside. Put it on makeup, making sure your hair is good, making you, you smell good. All this is on the outside. What are you on the inside? What do you look like on the inside? Is your faith in God? Are you fellowshipping with God? Are you dressed up on the inside? Are you listening to me? So every area, are you trusting God? Are you depending on him? Are you in fellowship with him? Are you listening to his word? Getting ahead of myself. How did it, are you fellowshipping with God? Is his word? Are you feeding on his word? Are you obeying his word? Are you walking in love? Are you in fellowship with him? If you'll do that. Now think about this. Really the Christian woman, you shouldn't be doing this after you get married. You should be doing this before you get married. Oh, by the way, that's why a lot of women get deceived. I, uh, well, I'm getting, oh, thank you, Lord. Listen. They get deceived. Why? See, all they have is what's going for them on the outside. So what happened? On the inside, there's not a meek and quiet spirit. Meek meaning they're not dependent on God. They're not willing to be led by God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because meek means you're teachable. Teachable first to God. God, I want your will. God, I want you to lead me. Lord, I'm trusting you for everything. That's what this is about. Now, that's on the inside. Are you listening to me? Meek and quiet. Now, quiet meaning it's calm. There's not anxiety. Oh, get that now. So that's how, no, if you're anxious, 
you're going to get the wrong one. You'll hook up with the wrong person. See, because you're anxious. Anxiety is connected to fear. Fear of missing out. You're looking at what other people do, are doing instead of what's on the inside. Is anyone hear what I'm saying? Amen. That means a woman could be beautiful on the outside. I'm not picking on women, but we are talking about women's superpowers, so I can pick on women today. Listen, so I need your help. A woman could be beautiful on the outside, but empty on the inside. Amen. Is anyone hearing what I'm saying? Amen. And then they can become victims. And they could be a nice person. Doesn't mean they're not a nice person. Doesn't mean they're not a good person, but we're talking about a Christian woman who be, or a Christian wife. See, it's on the inside first. Yes. Your fellowship with God. Get full on the inside. Yes. Get beautiful on the inside. Yes, Amen. And Jesus, God tells you, he says, which is in the sight of God. Of, it, he says, it's precious. Yes. It's a great price. He's looking for that humility of heart. He's looking for women. He says, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm depending on you. I'm willing to, Lord, I'm willing to follow your direction for my life. See that? that trust it. Now, this is interesting. Think about this. Write it down. Look at it in your own time. In, in, um, in Proverbs um, 31, we're given an example of an amazing woman. And I like to refer to her because it's in the Old Testament. Here's a woman. She's married. She has children. She's obviously a businesswoman and a very successful one. She has it all going together. It's amazing. It says her husband praises her and her children praise her. She's an absolutely amazing woman. But yet, you know, she's got all these powerful things, but yet she knows how to respect her husband. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Say it's of the heart. It's the heart. Turn to someone, it's about what's on the inside. What's on the inside? See, God, that's, that is what's got to be developed in us. Amen. Because now women, so your superpower is the ability to trust God. Amen. Your superpower, real superpower, is to be beautiful on the inside. Your real superpower, think about this now, is to be meek and humble in following God from your inside. Amen. It's to be peaceable inside. Amen. It's to be trusted. I mean, to tr be able to trust God from the inside. Are you listening to me? You bring that into the marriage. Boy, I'm telling you, you become unstoppable. Amen. Now, that's what's on the inside. Someone say inside. inside. Now, when that is on the inside, and again, that is developed. That comes out of your personal relationship with Jesus. Amen. No one can do that for you. Amen. The fruit of that is all these other things that women don't like to hear about. <laughs> so, so look at what it says. Let's read on here. Look at what it says here. Let's, um, after he says, but let it be the inward adorning, so you got to put something on then, right? And beauty of the hidden person of the heart, which with the un incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. I love that. Make sure you underline it. Listen to this now. For it was thus that the pious, or oh, King James says, holy women of old who hoped in God. Underline that. Mm -hmm. So he's now he tells you now what God is looking for. Now he's about to give you an example. It says in the past, the women that we uphold as holy, the, the examples... He says, they hoped in God. Didn't I tell you one of the things? Their trust was in God. See, they're inside. They trusted God. The danger we have in our day is the, um, we could say the epidemic of the models, the pictures that's been put up in front of young people. And so what are they majoring on? In some cases, it's gone so bad. I'm seeing people and they look like some of the, um, what do you call those? Um, that is a word I'm looking for. They, they become, there's people emulating the features, the looks, the body types of influences. That's the word I was looking for. Why? That's all they see. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God wants the Christian woman 
not to look, not to uphold the examples of the world. Because most of them are empty on the inside. Because that's all they have. That's all their focus is. And to do this, that's why Romans chapter 12 verse 2 tells us, we don't be conformed to this world. We've got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. A different way of thinking. Are you listening to me? So he says now the holy, listen, so he's now going to put up now the models. In other words, in our day we say now, I want you to follow the examples of this. That's really what he's saying. There were these holy women of God. Now listen to what he, how he, let's look at what he says about them. The holy women of God who hoped in God. Please underline that. <laughs> they, this, they, they trusted in God. They were accustomed to beautify themselves. Listen to this. This is part of how what was on the inside showed up on the outside. Their trust in God. Their humility towards God. Their relationship with God. Again, their trust, hope, confidence in God. Their desire to please God was uppermost. It says they beautified themselves this way. Listen, and were submissive to their husbands. Now you know why a lot. So now, listen now. I don't know, hold up. Submissive to their husbands, adapting themselves to them as themselves secondary and dependent on them. It was thus that Sarah obeyed Abraham. Oh, isn't it interesting? We uphold Abraham as the father of faith. Amen. But yet here, it commends Sarah. Sarah obeyed Abraham, following his guidance and acknowledging in his, his headship over her by calling him Lord, master, leader, authority. And now you are her true daughters if you do right and let nothing terrify you not giving way to hysterical fears or letting anxieties unnerve you. Now, see, we have to read these scriptures as hard as it might be because God wants to get something through to us. Again, we already established the motivation of the Christian husband. It is not what he can get out of his wife. We already established that for weeks. Now we get into this. The Christian woman who is trusting God the Christian woman who has established God as her source, as her provider. He tells her now, out of this relationship with God, out of being strong on the inside, in her marriage relationship with her husband, she recognizes that, you know what? For this marriage to work, I have to recognize my husband as the head of this household. Amen. Is anyone hear what I'm saying? Amen. That's not a bad word if we take in everything we've been teaching up until now. Forget about all these other people and what you've thought it was before. What is God saying to us? Yes. So if I have a husband, if I, I, my job, love my wife. Let the love of God be my motivation. Keep out of me any desire to try to manipulate her, control her, oppress her. Keep that far from me. Make it my vision to make her life the best it can be. You know, God, use, help me not to get in the way of her fulfilling her highest potential. Everyone see that? But now, in the, in the marriage, now, but the wife now realizing, okay, from this right spirit, I'm going to recognize my husband as the head of this family. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to do everything I can to allow him to lead this family and follow God so we can walk in peace. Everyone see this? Everyone got that? Is that clear to everybody? This, I'm, if we'll do this right, I'm telling you, it will, our, our homes will be powerful. Our homes will be beautiful. Is anyone hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So it says, that was, it, it um, applauds Sarah, lifts her up as a model because of how she related to Abraham. Think about that. Did you know that a lot of, I want to say most, but it's not, a high percentage of Christian homes are functioning in rebellion. Men who are in rebellion to God and yet call themselves Christians and don't because they don't walk in love towards their wife and their children. And, and women who walk in rebellion. I may have heard this saying, 
if mama's not happy, no one's happy. Don't ever say that around me. Because I hear the way I hear that is rebellion. It's a woman who wants to listen. You know what I'm saying? Is that if she if if she's not happy? In other words, everything's got to be what she wants. Now that's okay if she's the head of the house and there's no husband there. But it ain't okay if there's a husband in the picture. Is it? So a lot of these stuff we we just say it's like. But no, it's it's really allowing rebellion. Is anyone hear what I'm saying here? And so you've got to understand what God, it's what God is looking for. Remember, we talked about it comes from here. It's not external pressure. It's not what someone is making you do. You see what I'm, that's why I know we took a while. But it's, you get this, on the inside, I'm trusting God. I'm depending on God. That's why we said it's not about submitting to abuse or verbal abuse. And all this kind of God has nothing to do with that. It's a wife in that relationship. Because of a relationship with God, she now sees her husband the way God wants her to see him. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And so she's giving him what? Respect. She's allowing him to lead the home. She's allowing him to be the head of that home that God wants him to be. She's submitting to him. Think about this. Not so much because she wants to or feel, because your flesh is going to, how many know we've got flesh? Amen. We always have ideas that are wrong. But now she submits to her Lord and says, Lord, I know this is what pleases you. Amen. And I want my home to be what you want it to be. I'll just be, Let me wrap this up. Listen, I want to read this scripture to you. So again, it's an attitude of the heart. I want you to get that, if anything. It's a gentle and peaceful spirit. Amen. It's an attitude and, and, and a spirit that God appreciates. Please get that. It's a woman who trusts God. Now I'm going to read the same passage from the um, Passion because it says it really well. Now let me speak to you, wives, to the wives. Be devoted. Remember, it's from this spirit now. Be devoted to your own husbands so that even if some of them do not obey the word of God, your kind conduct will win them over without you saying a thing. Boy, oh, listen to that. You know, many women, you know what their problem is? They talk too much. But you already know that. For when they observe your pure, godly life before God, it will impact them deeply. Listen, let your true beauty come from your inner personality. Personality. Not a focus on the external. Now, again, it doesn't say the external is not important. It is. But you see, we've got to understand what is primary. For lasting beauty comes from a gentle and peaceful spirit, which is precious in God's sight and is much more important than the outward adornment of elaborate hair, jewelry, and fine clothes. Holy women of long ago who had set their hopes on God beautified themselves with lives lived in deference to their own husband's authority. For example, our mother Sarah devoted herself to her husband, Abraham, even called him master. And you have become her daughters when you do what is right without fear and intimidation. You see that? Her submission was not to fear. There was no intimidation in their relationship. Isn't it? Her submission wasn't based on that. Husbands, you in turn must treat your wives with tenderness, viewing them as a feminine partners who deserve to be honored for their co-heirs with you of the divine grace of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Isn't that powerful? That's why all these things come together. So these qualities that um, Christian wives, uh, wives have to develop is meekness, is being teachable. All of this starts with your relationship with God, willing to follow God in every area of your life, willing to serve and minister. See, that's from the heart, not striving to be the head, humble, willing to follow. Are you listening to me? Let me close a few, a few thoughts before, as I close. You see, in thinking about this, Wives have to decide which version 
of their husbands they want. Let me tell you what I, what I mean by that. There are men I met, I've met, and it's a, a good number of men. Their wives don't know they're getting a certain version that is not the best. Carl, what do you mean by that? Let me tell you what I mean by that. Because their wives, their, mar- their wife all insists on their way. The man can't really be himself because he functions in fear. He doesn't tell her what he really thinks, what he really believes is best. Why? He's afraid she'll lash out at him. She, he, he's afraid, listen, that she will insist on what she wants. So she has a heart problem. She has a submission to God problem. Not a submission to him, a submission to God problem first. We're talking to the Christian. So the thing is this. So he's not being himself. Because in many cases, think about this, because wives, you've got to realize what kind of, what, which version do you want? Do you want the husband who is submitted to you? I'm talking Christian wives now. And he lives in fear of you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He lives in fear of you lashing out at him. Are you so he's, he lives in fear of your wrath. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to, so now, I mean, you know now, that's a much smaller man than you really desire. But, are, but you see, it's going to take something, but are you willing now? Remember we said, you've got to go back and hear everything else we've said in this series to make, to make sure. Because we're not talking about a man controlling and manipulating women. No, we're not talking none of that. That's not, in, that's not in me. thing is this now. Do you want that man who's less than what he should be? Or do you want a man who truly will listen to God? Who will truly lead from an unselfish, self-sacrificial mentality? A man who will be honest with you because he wants your best. Well, you're gonna have to make the decision. Are you willing to take the reins off of him and be humble of spirit? Say, no, I don't have to have my way. Everything doesn't have to always go my way. Is anyone hear what I'm saying? Many of families, many of marriages, listen, I've counseled with couples and you hear it. Christian couples, they would swear to you, yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we're living for God. Listen, there are couples that have not slept together for six months, a year, and still call themselves Christians. What on earth is that? I was going to say, what in hell is that? Because that's really what it is. Is anyone hear what I'm saying? Amen. So you've got to understand that. So you've got to ask some serious questions. What kind of, which man do you want? Which version? Do you want the man who truly loves God, who will commit, who is committed to you, but will really be, let's say, will, but will take his place of leadership? Will you allow him to give instruction to the children from your heart, from his heart? Will you allow him, when you decide on certain things, to give feedback? You don't necessarily have to go with what he says, but will you allow him at least to communicate his heart? Is anyone hear what I'm saying? Amen. Because this is all a heart thing. I'm telling you, this is a heart thing. If we get this right in our marriages, our marriages will rise up stronger and powerful. Is anyone hearing me? This. Amen. So, uh, wives, husbands, we have a responsibility Amen. to love our wives as Christ loved us. Um, wives, you have the responsibility to be the to be women. Who, ha- who trust God from the inside, who develop that trust from the inside. Amen? Amen. Because remember, you're do- as you do this, oh, but let me say this. Women oftentimes don't know, wives don't know, you're one of the main creators of the atmosphere in your home. If you spawn and create rebellion in your relationship to your husband, what do you think you're passing on to your children. Are you listening to me? I should go back. I got, I'm going to pick up maybe on next week. That's why the scripture says in closing. Go to this and we'll quit. Ephesians chapter 5. The last verse. Ephesians 5.33. We'll close with this. I promise you. Ephesians 5.33. Look at this. 
So every now and then we need to read this scripture. However, let, let each man of you, without exception, oh, look at that. This is the Amplified. Love his wife. That means we don't have, it's not an option. Love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self. You see how we've got to bring ourselves under the authority of God's word? So we can't make loving our wives an exception. It's a job, but a good job. We've got to, we've got to train ourselves. But you've got to understand, this is not just a feeling thing. Boy, this is, this is like, this God wants this love flowing all throughout our homes, filling our homes, filling our wives with this God kind of love. Isn't it beautiful? Amen. As himself. Listen, then he says, talking about this wife's superpower, this is how which, what's inside, this is how it's going to show up. If this is, if the peace, if the humility, if the teachableness, if the uh, meekness is on the inside of you, if the trust in God is developing, and we get, we get, we grow in these things. Continue. This is how it's going to show. Let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband. Underline those words. Amen. Where most wives don't understand it, they don't get it. Number one thing husbands need is what? Respect mm -hmm. and reverence. That she notices him. Listen, the Amplified really embellishes this. Regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates, esteems, that she defers to him, praises him, loves and admires him. Isn't it amazing? I said to you when I was talking about the, man, the husband's superpower, what, hus, wives being loved by their husband is a need, not an option. Right? Right? I mean, you know, in, in many, sometimes, your uh, husband will be slow in some of those. You want to hold off a little bit. But it says, wives need our love. Amen. Well, guess what? Husbands need what? The respect. The respect. Amen. But it comes from the heart. Amen. It comes not from him begging you for it. Amen. It comes from you and your relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Let's stand right now. Praise God. Have you received the word of God today? Amen. And remember, we're not, we're not just hearers of the word. What are we? Doers. We're doers of the word of God. What are we talking about? A peaceful Amen. marriage and home. As we do these things, I'm telling you, our homes become peaceful. Amen. Our homes will be like a little bit of heaven on earth. Amen. Our homes become beautiful. Amen. I'm strife-free. Even, yes, we're going to have disagreements, but we get over them quickly. Why? Because we're motivated by love. Amen. We're motivated by trust in God. We want Amen. the very best. Are you listening to me? There's no kind, no such. You'll find in, in the earth, what happened, these people, there would be, there's no sense of abuse. No sense of separation. Divorce is a foreign concept. Amen. Why? Because we're walking in the will of God. So you, when you understand these things, you, your divorce became rampant in the church because of a departure from God's word. Amen. A departure from the love of God. A departure from walking in respect and reverence. Father, we thank you for your word today. Hallelujah. Thank you that we get to understand your plan. Your purpose for our lives. Your purpose for our homes. Lord, we know, praise God, your will Hallelujah. is that we have peaceful homes. Yes. Homes that have faith in God. Homes that trust God. Homes established on the love of God. And I'm asking you, Father, help us. Help men today. Help us to love Hallelujah. our wives. Not according to our feelings. Not according to our flesh. Not from a self-centered motivation. Help us to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And we know through the new birth, we have the potential. We have the ability of God to do this because your love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you for that. Thank you for helping women today, particularly Christian women today. Praise God. Help them 
to beautify themselves on the inside. Help them to trust you. Help them to believe you. Help them to put all their faith and confidence in you. Help them to be meek and humble and teachable, willing to follow you and your will for their lives. Now, Father, thank you for this. Thank you for the respect, the reverence, the love that you restore to our homes, to our families, and the blessing of God that accompanies that. You said we're heirs together of the grace of life. Now, Father, we purpose. Where we've missed it, we ask you and we thank you so much for your grace to forgive and cleanse us. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand. And Father, I'm asking even now, let the grace of God fill our homes. Let the grace of God fill our lives. Father, the grace for healing and strength, the grace for financial provision, the grace for our children, praise God. Let that grace fill our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Even that couple, Lord, that's been struggling. That couple, Father, even on the verge of separation, Father, in the name of Jesus, cause them both to look up to you again. Cause them to reach up to you, to trust you, to put their faith, their hope, their confidence, their trust in you, to believe in Jesus, to allow the love of God to fill their lives, to fill their minds, to fill their actions, transform lives today, Father. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Destroy yokes. Remove burdens. We ask you by your mighty power to let your peace be restored to marriages and families and homes in the name of Jesus. We ask you to move in the lives of families. Move in the lives of couples where there's been strife and division. Father, where words have been spoken, harsh words, death words, divisive words. We pray that the grace of God would come into those homes. Bring restoration, bring reconciliation to families and homes today in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you for this. Thank you for the families of Foundation for Life, that we are hearing your word. We are doing your word, and we thank you for your blessing upon every life every marriage, every family in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you so much for being with us again. We just love you and thank God for you in the name of Jesus. So we bless you. Bless you and your family. Have a wonderful week this week. And we thank God for you. If you've got a special request, a special prayer request, let us know so we can join our faith with you and see God touch your life. I trust the word of God has helped you today and ministered to your life today. Remember, we are doers of the word, amen, and not doers only, not hearers only. So bless you. You are dismissed.